Hey everybody, this is another sermon short where we do this week's sermon in only a third of the time. So we're in Deployed Part 7 where we're talking about how we should respond during a crisis. Now, if you're like me, you're thinking, man, we've been in crisis so long, we should know this by now. But I'm wondering if that's actually true. What's really cool is when you go back to the first century church and you look in the book of Acts, you will find that there is something that we overlook that's just a few verses in Acts chapter 11 that though they were beginning and they were the scattered church due to a persecution and they were going from city to city, people were moving away from Jerusalem, but they were still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church was growing. People were uh, coming to faith in Jesus Christ and all those great things were happening, there was something still very, very tragic that happened in the midst of that awesome movement. I want to read it for you from Acts chapter 11 right now. It says in verse 27, Now in these days prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So here's the thing, when a crisis, and this was a global crisis, this was a famine across the entire land. So there's a little parallel from what they were going through in the first century to what we're going through today. We're in the midst of a global pandemic. We're in the midst of a large scale crisis. The typical response for those who follow Jesus during a crisis is to try to figure it out. Try to make sense of it. Why is this happening? Is God punishing someone? Is this a sign that Jesus Christ is about to return and take all of his believers back to heaven with him? Um, whose fault is this? This is what we tend to do during a crisis. But we find in that short little passage that the response of the followers of Jesus was to simply help, to help other people. Specifically, these believers who had left Jerusalem and had left Judea to begin new churches and preach the gospel and establish God's kingdom in other places, they sent money back to Judea. They actually sent resources in their unique way, with their unique abilities. They sent resources back to the place from which they came. As it turns out, there in Judea and in Jerusalem, the believers there had it pretty tough because not only were they living in a place where the famine was hitting too, but they were under greater persecution than even they were because that's where the persecution began. So they were struggling. So you can make an argument that this little passage in Acts chapter 11 teaches us that what we ought to do during a crisis is look at where the greatest needs are and seek to meet those needs. We just need to step up and help people as best we can using our unique abilities and resources. What a great reminder as we're in sort of a month number five of a global pandemic, we need to go back to realizing this is what we're called to do. And yet, I try to understand this, and I have a lot of questions about this global pandemic. I don't fully understand why it's happening, and I wonder how God's redeeming it. I've seen some great ways He's redeemed it, but we're still in it, and there's still a journey ahead of us. But let's not forget that the most important thing we can do as followers of Jesus is to help other people. And so that's what I want us to consider as we think about our next step. Our next step is to use your unique resources to help someone. That's it. Use your unique resources to help someone. How can you do that? How can you put that into action? Think about your unique abilities and think about the needs that you know around you. And you may have to do a little research. You may have to look at yourself and do an inventory like here's what I enjoy doing, here's what I'm good at, you know, here's what my budget looks like. And then you may have to actually ask people if they need help and figure out what that is. But man, more than ever before, I hope that people will look around and see that people who call themselves by the name of Jesus are people who aren't just uh, sitting around waiting for God to do something different or trying to figure it out or trying to blame someone for what's happening, but instead they see us doing whatever we, whatever we can to help those in need. Because here's what I learned from this passage. When a crisis comes, Jesus just wants you to help others. That's what they did in the first century, and that is what we're called to do now in the 21st century.